Okay, anyway, let's start with uh, lecture number three. And um, yeah, so I want to start talking about orthogonal projections. And this word you usually do not find in the book for machine learning. Um, but as someone coming from the mathematics side, what they call normal equations is actually ex exactly um, talking about orthogonal projections. Um, so let me recall what we talked about. So we were talking about linear regressions. And um, what was uh, the scenario? So we had some test data, t, and um, with um, x values and y. So we had this example with the Tebasaki, where x, the, the features, were given by the, the weeks living in Nagoya, and y, the labels, um, described the number of Tebasaki eaten. And then um, we plotted these data points and saw that they looked like uh, fitting a line but they are not exactly on a line and we were we wanted to find uh, the best possible uh, fit um, for this um, we wanted to find this hypothesis and um, but let's assume that we have these um, data points which are actually on a line so if i have three points and let's assume that they are on a line. So this would mean that these data points here I have y1, here I have y2, and here I have y3. And if this would be the case, then this blue curve here, this hypothesis, um, this line through these three points, which was given by this theta zero plus theta one times x, then um, these two numbers, theta zero and theta one, would satisfy um, this equation here, right? Because here, the, if you multiply this out, then here you have exactly um, h theta of uh, x one up to h theta of um, x n, where here in the picture n equals uh, three. But of course, this is not, um, the case in reality. So this equation here, um, so maybe let me do this smaller, and let me call this here the matrix A, and this here the vector Y, and this here the vector theta. So in this perfect world, um, we have this equation that A times theta equals Y, or in other words, A theta minus Y uh, equals zero. But in reality, um, we have a different picture. So maybe in this case, um, the data points um, maybe I have these three points. Let me make them red. This, this, and this. And then in reality, the, the best, uh, what we want to find is, is this here. But in this case, um, these thetas, they do not satisfy this equation here. So in this case, um, we have that a theta is not equal to y, um, but um, I mean, how do we find this, this nice line here, which somehow is the best line we can find? Well, what we try is we want to see, um, try to make this here small. So instead of uh, bringing it to zero, which is not possible, we at least want to try to make this small. And what does it mean to be small? Well, this here is a vector. So this is a vector of, of size n. And um, so if we want to say something is small, we need to uh, use uh, some, some norm. And in this case, um, what you usually use is the Euclidean norm. So what is the, the norm? So recall the, the norm of a vector. If I have a vector v1 up to vn, then the Euclidean norm of this is just, I take the entries. I, um, each entry, I take the square. 
and then I sum them up and I take the square root. So, so in this case here, we cannot solve a linear um, system, but at least, um, so this here we, we, we cannot solve, but we can try to make this difference here from the left and right hand side small. Okay, so, so this is the same slide with the text with I, which I just said. So usually our, our data is not exactly on a line, um, but we want to minimize, minimize this norm of this matrix times this vector here minus the right hand side here. And the goal today is to explain the following result, uh, which you saw last time, um, but which is maybe not clear. Um, so this, this statement is that if we want to find the, um, the theta such that this here is minimal, what we need to consider is this new equation here. Um, so if, uh, yeah, so, so here, the left-hand side is the transpose of A times A. So this here is a square matrix. In this particular example, this here is, well, this here is A, theta, and this is Y. And what is A transpose times A, where this is, uh, I have this matrix here. This is the transpose of A. and I multiply it with A. So in the result, if I multiply a two by N matrix with the N by two matrix, the result is a two by two matrix with some entries uh, you can calculate. So this here is a two by two matrix. And um, this vector here, this theta in this case here is a vector of size two. And here the right-hand side, um, we multiply y. So what is A transpose y? So A transpose is again this matrix here, x1 up to xn. And y is just our y. So if I multiply this two by n matrix with this n by one matrix or this, this vector of size n, so this will also be a vector of size uh, two. So here it's really, um, the statement is that if I want to find the best possible solution to this equation here, which maybe doesn't have any solution, but we want to find the best possible one, the statement is that we can solve this um, linear system here with two equations and two variables. Um, and this in general has an exact solution. So here we really have a two by two matrix multiplied with something you want to find equals a vector of size two. And this usually has an exact solution for theta zero and theta one. And these theta zero and theta one then will give the best possible solution to this equation here. So this is the statement of this <clears throat> theorem. And the goal today is to, to, to prove or to understand the statement of this theorem, because if you see it like this, maybe it's not clear why the exact solution of this linear system gives the best possible solution of this linear system. <clears throat> <clears throat> and this here is um, in the literature also called the, the normal equations. Okay, so let's uh, try to prove this theorem. So you don't need to understand why now, because um, this we will try to understand. So for this, we need to recall some words from linear algebra. And um, yeah, so this, actually my students in linear algebra one now learn this week. So. Uh, already first year students can now follow. So if I have a matrix, 
So we will do it now a little bit more general, not just a theta of size two, but um, more generally. So our matrix A um, will be an N by M matrix. And I'm sorry, in the homework, uh, we use M times N matrices, but I want to use an N times M matrix here because N usually correspond to the number of, um, of trainings examples. So if I go back here, the, here the size of this vector, this n corresponds to the number of trainings examples. So that's why I use a n times n matrix. Uh, and the m usually in our case will be d plus one, where d was the number of features. Um, but yeah, just don't be confused. So usually you would say, you would talk about m times n matrices, uh, but I wanted to use the same n. So don't worry. Anyway, if we have a matrix, an arbitrary matrix, then the image of this matrix A um, is the following set. Um, so this is an N times N M matrix. So the image um, will be a subset of the R N. And this is a set of all vectors V um, such that there is a theta um, such that A theta equals V. So in other words, um, if I have a fixed matrix A, then this linear system here, A theta equals Y, has exactly a solution if this Y is in the image of A. So this is the definition of the elements in the image of A. It's just, um, if I have a matrix, the elements on the, of the image of A are those vectors I can have on the right-hand side of a linear system, um, such that this linear system has a solution. So let's do an example. If I take, for example, the matrix. So here in this case, M equals N equals two. <clears throat> so what is the image of this matrix A? Um, so it will be vectors of size two with a certain property well, for, for which vectors can I solve this linear system here that AX equals uh, V? Well, here we see that the first, um, um, the, the second row is just two times the first row. Um, so no matter what I multiply here to this matrix, you know, theta one and well, theta zero and theta one, um, the result will also have the property that the first entry is um, half the second entry. Um, so the image, of this matrix here is all vectors v1, v2 with the property that v2 equals two times uh, v1. So if I take a vector of this shape, then I can solve this equation ax equals this vector. Okay. So let's draw this image. So So what is, um, yeah. so this here is the image of A. So this is a subspace of the R2. So these are all vectors which satisfy the property that the second entry is twice um, the first entry, right? So for example, here, I have this vector um, one, two, and um, this is in the image of A. And clearly I can find vector X such that AX equals uh, one, two, right? Because what is the solution of this? Uh, in this case, the solution is, um, well, it's not this direction, but. Uh, so if, if I take the vector one zero, then A times this vector X gives this one two. But if I have a vector which is outside um, of the image, so let's say this one here, so let's say this is y, which is three, one. 
then this equation ax equals y um, uh, so this has no solutions so maybe let's so this has no solutions right because here this this vector is not in the image of a but now um, what would be the best possible um, solution um, meaning um, how can we minimize how can we minimize this ax minus um, 3 1 so what should this here be so this here is in the image of a what should we use such that this difference here is small so in other words which point on this purple line here is the closest point to this point here? Well, the answer is um, we this point in this case here, because what we want to do is we want to take the orthogonal projection um, to this line here, because every other point here um, would have a larger distance to this point here, right? Um, so in this case, um, Yeah, so in this case, uh, um, oops. So in this case, um, this quantity here, so which is, so this um, green part here is exactly this line here. Um, so this is minimal um, for this point here. And this point um, is, um, is this one, two, and therefore um, uh, we get the minimal, um, so, uh, the, this is minimal for the case x equals one, zero. Okay. But uh, let's do it more, more generally. Um, or maybe first do a little bit more complicated example. Um, so let's consider this matrix here. And, um, and now um, also let's think about what this has to do with um, the original problem of finding a best fit. So if I draw again this and I have the points one, two, and three, one, two and three and I have um, h theta of x equals theta zero plus theta one times x um, then this equation here a theta equals uh, y one y two y three um, has a solution if and only if this vector here is in the image of A, um, meaning that if I um, start here with oh, y1, y2, let's say I take these two points, then um, to have a solution like this, this means that these two points already um, dictate where the, the next point needs to be. Uh, because uh, two points already give me a line, and therefore this point here, um, y3, um, is already dictated. So in this case, you can also say that the, the image of A, I mean, this, uh, uh, you need to do some calculation to, to find out that the image of A are those vectors y1, y2, y3, such that if I choose y1 and y2, like here, I choose this and this. And um, in order to have for this to have a solution means in this graph here that the, the third point is also on the same line, which is given by these two points. So in this case, um, if you do some calculation, you see that in this case is y3 needs to satisfy it's minus y1 plus two times uh, y2. Okay. So in this here, 
is a subset of R3. And this we can also plot. Um, so here, and so this is the R3. This is our matrix A. And here is the, the image of the matrix A. And if we plot all points in three dimensions, which satisfy uh, this equation here, then we get this um, plane here go going through the uh, origin. Okay. And um, yeah, and if we now, for example, want to solve the equation that a theta equals, let's say, um, 3, 0, 0, where is 3, 0, 0? Well, here it's 1, 2, uh, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0. So here is the vector 3, 0, 0. So this here is clearly not on this blue plane, and therefore this has no solutions. But in this picture here, and we will do this later, the calculation, uh, we can, what we want to do now is also like in the example before, we want to take the projection of this point onto this plane. And then this point on the blue plane, um, this, we can put here on the right hand side and find a solution for the theta. And this corresponding theta will then give us the best solution um, to this original equation uh, here. Okay. Are there any questions on, on this part so far? Okay, then let's continue. So now some words you also learned in linear algebra. Um, so if you have a subspace like this plane or a line going through the origin and the image of a matrix is always what you call a subspace, um, then you can define the, the so-called orthogonal complement of the subspace U. And this is defined by taking all vectors um, which are orthogonal to all vectors on the subspace. And um, this here is a dot product. And this is, if, if I have two vectors with entries u1 up to un and v1 up to vn, then the dot product of these two vectors is just the number. And this is just given by multiplying um, u1 with v1 plus u2 v2 up to un uh, vn. And then this has some geometric interpretation, namely the statement is if the dot product of two vectors is zero, um, then these two vectors are um, orthogonal, meaning that, well, this I, picture I can just draw in two dimension or in three dimension, but this just means that the, the angle between them is 90 degrees. So therefore this orthogonal complement of some space, if I have a plane, then the orthogonal complement is just everything which is orthogonal. So if I have a plane in three dimensions, then the orthogonal complement is just a line. So maybe if we go back to, um, to this one here, then in this picture, um, this here would be the orthogonal complement of the image. So we could write here, this is the orthogonal complement of this image of A. And in this picture here, the orthogonal complement um, would be the, somehow this thing here. So this sh should be a line. Or maybe it looks more like this. So this here is the orthogonal complement of the image of A which is just this line um, being orthogonal on this blue plane. Okay, so maybe some of you remember this from linear algebra. Um, and now the statement is, which is actually quite a silly statement, that um, if I have a subspace, like the image of a matrix A, then any vector in this space, no matter if it's on the image or not, it can be written 
as a sum of something which is um, in the subspace plus something which is in the orthogonal complement. Um, so for example, in two dimensions, if I have some subspace U, U, then the orthogonal complement is maybe, uh, well, not really, but here. Uh, so let's assume this is 90 degrees, then this is the orthogonal complement. And the statement is that any vector Y, this vector here, can be written as something in U, but here uh, I can take this vector and I can take this vector here. So here, this is what I would call Y U and this I could call Y orthogonal. And then you see clearly this vector here is the sum of this in U plus the stuff in the orthogonal uh, complement. And this Y U is called the orthogonal projection Um, of y onto u. Because you see this difference here is in the orthogonal complement, um, meaning if I start with y and um, then this y u here is exactly what I get by going um, to u. And this point here is exactly the point on u which has the smallest distance to this point y because all other points are farther away than this. Okay. And um, and this is what we want to oops. And this is what we want to find uh, because in our application this u will be the image of a, and then this y will correspond to our data, our our labels, and we want to take the orthogonal projection here to find something in the image of a. And if we have something in the image of A, we can find some theta such that A times theta is this thing here. And then the corresponding theta will also give us the, the, the best fit um, for our original Y. Yeah, so this is the question. How do we find um, um, the, the orthogonal um, projection? So, and... Um, so let's draw this again. So let's assume we have now a matrix A and we have the image of A, which is a subspace. And, um, and we have a Y. So what we want to find is um, this here. So the Y, the orthogonal projection of Y onto the image of A. But actually, we do not want to find this point. What we want to find is uh, the corresponding theta. And uh, every element in the image of A is given by A times some theta. So actually, we want to find an element which we can write like A times theta. So A times theta is in the image of A. So this will give this point. And this is actually what we in are interested in. We are interested in this theta. And now, um, what if we consider this one here, a theta minus y. Well, where is this in this picture here? This is exactly uh, this here, right? If I take this point here and I subtract this, um, then I get this guy here. But this here is now um, in the orthogonal complement. So this is in the orthogonal complement of the image. Yeah. So now our problem is given A and Y, we want to find a theta such that A theta minus Y is in the orthogonal complement of the image of our matrix A. Um, so we want to know how the, the orthogonal complement of our image of A looks like. And there's a quite um, simple description, namely, Maybe I can copy it this. Copy. The statement is if I have a matrix and I, I'm interested in the orthogonal complement of the image of this matrix, 
then this is the same as the kernel of the transpose, where if uh, the kernel, well, these are just fancy words, but the, the, the definitions are quite simple. So these are just all vectors v, such that a times v equals, uh, a transpose times v equals zero. And why does this has to do with the orthogonal complement of the image of A? Well, if I have a matrix A, which is given by some columns, or M. So here, if I have an N times N matrix, then this matrix A has M columns. And um, the image of A um, are all possible linear combinations of these columns. Um, so this is a span of these columns. But what is A transpose? Well, A transpose um, means I just take the columns as rows. And what is the kernel of A transpose? Well, these are all vectors such that if I multiply this vector with this matrix here, um, then I get zero. But if I multiply here a vector, this, if I multiply what I do here, um, I just, so if I multiply AT with some vector, uh, well, let's say V, then the entries here are just given by taking the dot product of this vector with this. So here it's exactly um, C1 dot V, C2 dot V, uh, and so on, Cn, Cm dot V. And the kernel are those vectors V such that this is zero, but this means exactly that this V here is um, that all these entries are zero, and this means that this V is orthogonal to all these columns of C. Um, so. But then you see that this is um, the same as the orthogonal complement of the, the image. Um, um, because the image is spanned by these vectors. And if, if the kernel is given by all vectors which are orthogonal um, to, the, to these vectors, then this is exactly the orthogonal complement. Okay, so the statement here is by this proposition, the orthogonal complement of the image of A is exactly the kernel of A transpose. So let me copy this. Are there any questions here? No. And in a second, we will have exactly the equation we, we were looking for. So the original problem is we have a matrix A and a vector Y. We want to find a theta such that A times theta, which is something on the image, such that the difference here is in the orthogonal complement, because then this has a, is the nearest point to this Y. But now we also saw that the image, the orthogonal complement of the image is just a kernel of A transpose. Therefore, we want to find theta such that this is in the kernel of A transpose. And being in the kernel of A transpose means if I multiply it with A transpose, it's zero. Therefore, if I multiply this with A transpose, then this is zero. But if we just multiply this out, we see that this is zero, but this is the same as A transpose A times theta equals A transpose Y. So this is the, the equation we had at the beginning. And therefore we see if we find a theta which satisfies this condition here, then this theta if we multiply it with A, will give the point on the image of A 
which is the nearest point to this y, and therefore this difference here is minimal. And therefore we get our original thing. Uh, therefore we get exactly this statement here. We want to find the best possible solution for this unsolvable system here, but we can do so by solving this thing here. And this usually always has a solution, um, an exact solution. And maybe this um, answers the original question at the beginning for the homework one, because in the homework one, you should solve this equation here um, exactly by using this implemented uh, NumPy uh, solve. And then you get a, an exact solution, which gives the best fit for this one here. Okay. Yeah. And maybe just one final com comment. Um, so, so far, we, we just had these examples where the data is near a line. And, but of course, um, there could be also data which looks like this. And then maybe uh, the best fit would be a polynomial. Um, but even though the name is linear regression, um, this doesn't mean that we can just fit something uh, which is linear. Um, this just means that these coefficients are linear in some sense. Um, so this we can also, um, so if I have some x1, x2, and so on, uh, then I can do this, the same game by just taking the matrix A. So instead of putting um, just x1 here, I use more columns and also maybe allow uh, x1 squared, uh, xn, uh, x1, oops, d, On, and here xn, xn squared up to xnd. So this red curve here, we can then write like this. So we are looking for thetas, theta zero plus theta one, um, uh, x1 squared, uh, theta two, no, sorry, x, x squared plus theta two. x and theta 2 x squared uh, up to theta d uh, x d. So this linear regression, this word linear here just means that the, the coefficients here are linear, but the, the features, they can uh, depend non-linearly. So you can have something non-linear here. Um, so and this is also part of the, the, so this is part of the homework um, that you can that you use the stuff we discussed before for these more general matrices. And of course, you can also, instead of polynomials, you can use a logarithm or square roots or some other fancy um, um, functions. Um, but still, what you do is use linear regression to get um, these coefficients. Yeah, and now um, I wanted to switch to the homework and go through this. Um, okay, can you see this? Um, so this is homework one. So you can find the link on the homepage, but also in the Discord, and you just need to accept it with your GitHub. And um, so this, because of last time, there were some complaints that uh, uh, this was too much code for beginners. So here we really start um, at the beginning and have some dis explanation um, how to um, deal with um, matrices. And um, your first exercise is to, um, so here's an, an explanation how, how you could write a function which um, adds um, to matrices. And And also how to deal with uh, um, some some exceptions. And the first exercise is that you write a function which uh, calculates the transpose of a matrix. 
Um, so you need to use these, these concepts here. So here um, you can learn how to use these, uh, these for loops and go through the columns and rows. And this you should use to write a function which get as an input the matrix A and then returns um, a new matrix, uh, which is a transpose. And then the next part would be to implement the multiplication of two matrices. So of course, everything here is already implemented um, in, in NumPy, um, but to just get used to this um, um, Python, maybe this is one good thing to do at the beginning. And then the X, here is also one example how to solve a linear equation. Um, so for this, you can use this implemented function of NumPy, this linear algebra, or not this, this one here, to solve a linear equation. Um, so maybe I just skip over this. So if you have questions on this now, you can ask. And then um, you should use all this to um, do what we just discussed. Um, so you want to find, um, given a matrix A and Y, um, you want to find the best possible solution. So maybe this equation AX equals Y doesn't have a, or A, a theta equals Y doesn't have a solution, but you should write a, a function which gives the best possible solution. And inside this function, what you need to consider is this linear equation here. And this linear equation has an exact solution. And this you can solve by using this function here, this linear solve of NumPy. So the task here is um, I give you a matrix A and Y, and then you need to build these matrices A transpose A and um, the right hand side here. And then this you can use inside this function here. Okay. And and then you can um, do some plotting. So here's again the, the Tebasaki example. Um, this is um, just uh, plotting the, the data. And then um, what you, the next exercise is to write the function best fit, where as an input you get data, the, the X values, the, the features, and the, the Y values, the labels. And then using your, your best solution function, you should find the best possible theta. So in this case here, you should have an output theta zero and theta one. And so what you need to do here is you need to take these um, data here and write them in the matrix A and Y, and then use your best solution method and then return the theta. And then you can also plot um, the, the, the the H, the hypothesis you can get out of your thing. So here you don't need to do anything. This is already using your best fit function, but you need to implement this um, best fit function here. And then a bonus would be um, to do it generally for polynomials. So instead of just uh, this simple theta, which is a linear function, um, you should do it for a polynomial. And therefore, instead of taking as an input X and Y values, you also take as an input the degree of the polynomial. And of course, this function is also implemented already in NumPy. Um, so this is um, polyfit in NumPy uh, with the exact same input. Uh, but the idea here is that you use your own functions and implement it by yourself. So the only thing you use here from NumPy would be this function, this linalg solve. Uh, but if you want to go completely 100% self, then you can also implement this linalg solve by using uh, this Gaussian elimination. And then in this case, you would have a 100% your own implementation of this function without using any functions uh, from the library. So maybe this is a good exercise to get used to, to Python. And then the next exercise, maybe next week or a little bit later, will be more towards a machine learning and uh, gradient descent. But maybe for those who, who are not so familiar with Python, maybe this is a good start um, learning this a little bit. Are there any questions on the homework one? Maybe the person with the question at the beginning. Uh, 
No, it's fine. I just read the homework wrongly. Okay. Okay, then I will go to the iPad again. Good. So, yeah. And okay. So now, um, next section. So what we did now, um, um, this linear regression, and there are also a lot of variants of this linear regression. Um, so this first part here of the supervised learning. And what we want to do now is uh, give one example of uh, classification. And um, confusingly, the name of this algorithm uh, is called logistic, logistic regression. <laughs> um, so it's also some kind of regression, which is actually here, but it is used um, to do so-called binary classification. So to decide between the two things. So don't get confused. And uh, we are here in classification, but the thing we are talking about is called logistic uh, regression. Okay. So what is the, um, so the main idea for binary classification? So maybe one standard example you could think of is a spam filter. So if I have emails and I want to decide if they are spam or not, there are just two possible outcomes. It could be just not spam or it could be spam. So it's not like it's 50% um, spam. It's either it goes into your spam folder or it goes into your uh, inbox. So therefore um, our label space, which we denoted Y is now just a finite set, which we usually use a zero and a one. And the example we will talk about um, will be this passing exam example. So for example, the feature could be hours studied for an exam and the labels could be that um, either you failed or you passed the exam. So it's also zero and one. So it's not like you can pass 50%. It's either you passed or you didn't pass. And so here you can see some, some training set. So again, one asks some people, um, how long did they study? And then some of them tell you um, either they, they failed or they passed. And um, so what we want to find now is some decision if, um, so I, we want to find a hypothesis um, such that if I enter again, a new number for hours of studying, which then tells me if this possibly if you will pass or not. And of course you could do this. So what, so what graph do you have in mind here maybe is that here at some point around here, um, we switch from not passing um, to passing. So maybe it looks something like this, uh, but of course here are some, some points which doesn't really fit. So maybe it's not like this, maybe it's a little bit more uh, like this or maybe like this. Uh, but we could also say, well, um, why don't we just use uh, uh, linear regression, right? Because we could also take a graph here and then say maybe everything above 0 0.5 is passed and everything below 0 0.5 is failed. Um, but there you already see the problem that, for example, if we would add another point here, uh, then maybe the best fit curve would go more in this direction. And if we add even a point here, then it would go like this. And then you already see that this doesn't really fit um, this data here. Um, and also this graph here goes uh, above one and it goes into the, into the negative value. And maybe also a polynomial would not, not really be the best solution here. Um, so really what we want to find is really a curve which looks something like this. Um, so this curve, so the hypothesis will not be just between, so it will not just give zero or one, um, but we will try to find a curve like this. And then we say it's passed if it's above 0 0.5 and it failed if it's below 0 0.5. Yeah. And this kind of function is called a logistic function and this is why this, this, this algorithm we want to explain or this method is called a logistic regression. 
And um, so the, there are various choices for such a function, but the most common one for several reasons is the so-called sigmoid function or also called log logistic function. And this is given by this function here. So S of X is given by one over one plus uh, E to the minus X. Um, so what property does this function have? So you can see a plot here. So for example, at X equals zero, if I plug in a zero here, then this is one and therefore this is one half. So one property is that S of zero is one half. So what happens um, for big X? So if X goes to infinity, S of X, well, this is a calculus one. So what happens if uh, E to the minus X goes to infinity? Well, then this goes to zero and therefore this here goes to, to one. And if X goes to minus infinity, then the, the value here goes to infinity and therefore this whole thing goes to zero. So like you see in the picture here, it's really between uh, zero and one and in the middle it's uh, one half. And we want to find some variant of this function um, with some parameter um, to fit this data here. So you see already this looks like this S of X, um, but here is not zero. So it will be at a different point and also we want some factor to, to make it wider. Yeah, so, um, so therefore, what is the model for the hypothesis in this uh, new method? Um, so recall in the linear regression, the hypothesis we choose um, had this shape here. Um, so uh, we had um, D uh, labels, X1 up to XD, and we multiplied them with these weights. And so this notation I didn't use before, but um, this, um, so the weights are elements in Rd plus one. And therefore, if I multiply, oh, and also recall these X, the, the features are also in Rd plus one, where we, um, X1 up to XD had this convention that X zero is always one. And with this notation here, this theta transpose times X is just, uh, well, theta transpose is theta zero up to theta D times this vector X uh, one, X one, XD. So therefore, if you multiply this with this, um, you get exactly this here. And you could also say this is just uh, the dot product of theta and x. So this was our hypothesis in the linear regression case. And now um, in logistic regression, what one does is one usually takes a, the same uh, hypothesis, but plugs it into this um, sigmoid function. Okay, so this will be the new um, hypothesis. So it will be some sigmoid function, but inside we have this um, this original hypothesis. So it will be um, these uh, these. Uh, so for example, in the case d equals one, this h sigma of x will be one over one plus e to the minus sigma zero plus sigma one x, but more precisely x one. So this here is one, x one. Okay, so somehow this theta zero here and the theta one will tell us um, where this, the sigmoid function, where this point here at one half is. Um, I mean, when is this uh, one half? This is one half when this here is zero so in this case here, this H theta um, well, in this special case, at this point, oops, it's one half. 
okay. So, but now, um, um, so the next thing we did in the linear regression case was to, to define the cost function, because at this point we ask ourselves, um, how do we decide if the parameters or the weights, thetas are good or bad? And then we defined this function j, which was given by the sum over all trainings examples, and then taking the difference of the hypothesis at some trainings feature minus the trainings label, and then took the square. And then we said we want to minimize uh, this function. But now we will do it a little bit differently by using the so-called uh, maximum uh, likelihood method. Um, and for this, we need to say what we mean by likelihood. Oh, but first I do some example. Oh yeah, I also did the D1 case here. So again, this is a D1 case for our hypothesis. And for example, in our tra um, um, training um, set with these hours of studying and passing the exam. So for example, if you choose uh, minus 10, one for these numbers here, then you get this line here. And for, for example, minus three and one third, um, you get this line here. So you somehow see that uh, you can vary how how wide this um, this logistic regression function gets. So maybe it gets wider when there's even more overlapping data here. But maybe let's assume we don't have this thing here. Then maybe the best possible thetas would give something really steep. But the question is now: How do we define? Uh, how do we find these theta zero and theta one? Um, and so how do we say that thetas are good or bad? And how can we find good thetas? And for this, um, we will now um, talk a little bit about probabilities. Um, so our, our hypothesis, hypothesis is now a value between zero and one. So you could, we can also uh, think of this as being a, some probability. Um, so there's some, if you study um, such and such hours, then the probability of passing the exam is something between zero and one. And maybe some of you did some basic probability in school, also at university. So there's this notation P A B, which is called the conditional probability that the event A occurs given that event B occurs. So in our example, this A will correspond to passing the exam and the event B will be um, such and such hours um, were spent on studying for the exam. So, so our hypothesis, which we want to find, um, we can view this as telling us the probability, this one here, the probability of passing the exam. So maybe could also write it like this, P pass exam, the probability of passing the exam when we studied, studied X hours. So the probability of passing the exam, assuming that we studied X hours is exactly what this, this function H theta would, should give us. And here this notation, so this Y equals one is just um, um, the label being one means passing the exam here we mean x is we studied x hours. And here is just um, that this, I mean, this probability now depends on this parameter theta um, because this function h here depends on this, uh, this theta. So this is just a notation. And then clearly with, with this, um, the probability of failing. So here y equals zero means failing is um, if we want to use the function h um, theta is given by one minus h theta. Because if the probability of um, passing the exam is 30%, so it's 0 0.3, then the probability of failing the exam is 70%, so it's one minus um, 0 0.3. Okay, so this is really just a notation, but it's important now that we can interpret this hypothesis as being some probability um, of failing or passing. Or in this case, we say this H gives us the probability of um, passing the exam. And this year we can now put uh, 
uh, in a closed formula, um, which is given like this. So our y, our value, uh, our label, sorry, can be just zero or one. And so if you want to put these into one formula, one simple trick is just to, to write it like this. Um, so we take if um, we take h theta to the power of y times one minus h theta to the power of one minus y, uh, because if you plug in one now, then this is just h theta to the power one times one minus h theta x to the power zero. So this here is just one. So this is just h theta of x. And if you plug in zero, where then the first term vanishes it because it's a power to zero here and here it's just one minus theta. So it's, it gives the same formula as above. Okay. And so now comes the, um, the word likelihood. So what we want to find is the best possible theta. And in general, if you um, want to find the best possible, so if you have given training data, then you want to ask um, for a given um, weight, a given theta, how likely is this theta the best uh, how likely does this theta fits to the training data? So the likelihood, if you look it up, it means it measures the goodness of, of fit of a statistical model to a sample of data. So if you have training data, um, then we do want to ask um, what is the best possible, so what they call here statistical model. In our case, this is a theta. What is the best possible theta which uh, corresponds to our training data. And in our case, so it will be a function where we plug in theta and then it gives back um, how likely this theta is the best possible um, fit to our um, sample of data. And since our, our hypothesis measures, measures the probability, um, so if we have the, the likelihood of, of some theta we were just given by the product of all possible pos probabilities over the training set. Yeah, so, so more precisely, if I have a training set T where we have some data, like hours of studied for the first person and well, maybe he failed and then hours of person studied, sec uh, the, the hour studied for the second person and he failed and so on. And here maybe this, uh, the, the last person uh, passed. Uh, then the likelihood that a theta describes these data in the best possible way is when the product of all these possibilities um, are, um, where the likelihood is given by the product of all possibilities here. So meaning if these thetas uh, chosen in such a way that this describes this data well, then these probabilities are high um, because um, if I plug in some training example here where I know this person studied such and such hours and he passed or failed, um, if this theta is chosen correctly, um, then this probability is high because then it, yeah, then it fits the, the, the training data. And if we take the product um, over all training examples, this means that um, we um, assume that all these um, things appeared uh, at once. So, um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, if you ask for the probability of, of two uh, events, um, appearing at the same time, you multiply the probabilities of these two um, events. And this is exactly what we do here. So we, the likelihood of our um, weight theta is given by the product of all um, probabilities. And this is what we want to, so we model these probabilities by this hypothesis. So we ask for which theta is this 
function here big. And this is why we want to, to um, uh, why it's called the maximum likelihood. So we want, we want to find the theta with the maximum likelihood. Okay. Okay, no questions so far. And um, so here again is a, the formula from the slide before. So it's a product over all um, probabilities. And these probabilities were given by, by this closed formula, including our hypothesis. So we want to um, maximize this. And um, usually what you consider, so usually these likelihoods are given by products of probabilities. And often it's easier to instead of maximizing this product, it's easier to maximize the logarithm of this product. Um, and this makes sense because the logarithm is a, uh, it's monotonically increasing. So if you apply it to some function which you want to maximize, then also the, you can also um, maximize the logarithm of this function. And uh, the, the nice thing is, or the point why it's easier, one point is that the logarithm turns these products uh, into sums. So if we apply the logarithm um, to this function here, um, which is called the log likelihood of this um, weight theta. So if you apply the logarithm to this product here, then product becomes a sum and exponents, um, I mean, this is hopefully clear that if I take the product of I mean these rules from school, and if I have a power here, then this is just c times the log, log. Therefore, if you apply the logarithm here, you get a sum, and these exponents become factors here. And here we just have the um, the logarithm of our hypothesis. So therefore, the goal will be to maximize the log likelihood here meaning we want to find theta such that this bit, sum here over all trainings examples is big. And this uh, we will do by gradient ascent. So in linear regression, we want to minimize something. We want to make something small. And um, so in this case, um, we wanted to, to use this gradient descent of our cost function. And for this, um, we calculated the gradient and then the gradient showed in the direction of the steepest ascent. So we went in the other direction. So we subtract something um, from the current position where we are. Um, so we started with some random theta. And then in the first step, we, we looked in which direction shows the, the gradient. And when um, choosing this learning rate, we moved in the other direction and then we did this uh, several times and then at the end we get some theta uh, which is near the minimum but now we want to maximize something and therefore now we use the gradient ascent which is the same idea but now we want to go uphill so if we um we start with some theta and then look at this point uh, what is the gradient of the log likelihood this will show in the direction where this log likelihood will go up and then we also go in this direction and therefore we will have a plus here with some training rate. And um, this we will do explicitly um, next time. So what we need to do to do this, we need to calculate the gradient of this thing here. So we will need to plug in, um, so we, what was the gradient? So the gradient was given by this vector where we have this partial derivatives here. So we need to consider what happens if we take the derivative of this function here. And for this, we need to plug in um, our, our hypothesis. So here, our hypothesis was given by um, one over Maybe let's do again the d equals one case, one plus 
e minus theta zero plus theta one x. And in this case, we also have a log here. So to calculate this gradient here, um, we need to consider the derivative of this guy here with respect to theta zero and with respect to theta one. And this is just a calculus one, but in the end we will see that the, the gradient ascent we get looks quite similar to the formula we, we derived for this linear regression. And yeah, but this uh, maybe we will do next time then also in Python. And the story here is that um, in contrast to the linear regression, um, there's no direct formula to solve our problem. So today at the beginning, we talked about this, um, um, this linear algebra part where we can find a direct formula for this theta by reducing it to this, um, um, this normal equation um, to this a t a theta equals a t y. So in this case, uh, we could say the direct formula is we multiply with the inverse. And then this gave a solution here um, for our linear regression. But this is not possible for this problem here. So here we really need to, to use some algorithm to, to find a numerical solution. And this we can either use do by this uh, gradient ascent or by some other methods like, so for example, the, the Newton method. But I think that's all for today. <laughs>